It was the year 1847, where one day Dr. Samuelis was thinking about his patients in his hospital in Germany. He focuses into maternal fever rates, which is a fever that mothers who have given birth get after a few hours to days after delivery. This fever was dangerous and often led to death. Thus, Dr. Samuelis needed to find ways to lower this rate. He noticed and was perplexed as to why maternal fever rates were so low when doctors delivered the babies compared to when midwives delivered the babies. He found that the patients of doctors had an 18% rate of maternal fever versus just a 2% rate from the midwives. It had to be something that the doctors were doing that the midwives were not. Shortly after, his good friend, who was also a doctor, died of an infection similar to maternal fever after poking his hand with a scalpel during an autopsy on cadavers. Dr. Samuel Wallace proposed a connection between contamination and maternal fever. He realized that doctors would go from the morgue to delivering babies, and he proposed that these doctors were carrying cadaver particles. Dr. Samuel Wallace knew there was an element of cleanliness here that was in effect. He went on to tell his doctors to use a chlorinated lime solution, which acted as a kind of soap, and they were to do so every time they went to the morgue. He was able to reduce the rate of maternal fever in patients of doctors from 18.3% to 2.2%, which was the same rate as from the midwives. You would think that this feat would be celebrated in the medical community. However, that was not the case. Remember that this was 1847, and doctors still believed that evil spirits caused disease and not germs. Thus, when Dr. Samuelis brought out his theory of disease-causing particles, he was ridiculed and even fired from the hospital he ran. Dr. Samuelis was angry, and he would often write letters to show his injustice. This only angered the community more, and he was put into a mental asylum because they thought he was losing his mind. He died 14 days later from an infection. It wasn't until 1861 when Louis Pasteur came along with his germ theory that proposed that microorganisms were the cause of disease. Pasteur's theory started with the fermentation process of wine, where he found molecules in the wine which would only be explained if they were produced by a living organism. Later on, he used the work of Robert Koch and took the blood of sheep dying of anthrax disease. He was able to isolate the microbe Anthracis bacillus, showing that microorganisms indeed exist and can cause disease. Moving forward, another pivotal scientist involved in the development of antiseptic techniques was Joseph Lister. He is known as the father of modern surgery, and he suggested that bacteria should not enter open wounds as this can help avoid problems after surgery. Therefore, in the 1860s, he encouraged the use of carbolic acid, or more commonly known as phenol, and he would use this spray to disinfect the bandages and surgical tools prior to performing surgery. This idea was not well received by the other surgeons at the time, but as they observed the death rate of Joseph Lister's patients decrease, they began to use this technique as well. And so this brought up the debate between antiseptic versus asepsis. Antiseptic techniques refer to the destruction of bacteria on living things, and this can be harmful to patients. Whereas asepsis is a use of practices to prevent contamination from harmful pathogens. Moving forward, in 1879, the autoclave was created. This machine used high heat and pressure to sterilize medical equipment in order to eliminate pathogens. Due to the introduction of the autoclave, in the 1900s, surgeons started to use sterilized gowns, caps, and gloves to perform surgery and did not use their street clothes. Over the years, aseptic technique has developed and the process has undergone a complete transition. We are going to highlight and show you what steps surgeons take prior to performing surgery to make sure that you stay safe. The goal of aseptic technique is to eliminate germs and prevent contamination. Step 1. Hand washing. To properly wash your hands, make sure to not touch the dispenser and wash between your fingers and fingertips. For surgery, also make sure to wash your wrists and your arms. Finally, when finished, make sure to raise your hands and avoid touching anything. Step 2. Protection. 
With clean hands, wear hair covers, surgical masks, and eye protection. Step 3. The Equipment Have a personnel place the gloves, the gowns, and the equipment on different sterile tables away from the main sterile field. This would prevent the chances of contamination. Step 4. Wearing the gown Make sure to only touch the inside of the gown. Extend both arms into the gown at the same time and allow the sleeves to unfold naturally. There are two straps on the gown. Do not touch those straps. Ask an assistant to tie those instead. Step 5. Wearing the gloves Instead of using your hands, use the cuffs of the gown instead. Then take your hands out of the gown slowly when you're ready to wear the gloves. Make sure to pull the cuff of the gloves over the cuff of the gown to provide an airtight seal. Step 6. Establish a sterile field. A sterile field is a set location around the patient where only sterile items can be present. Place surgical drapes on the patient while only exposing the operated area. Then use tape or other marking equipment on the floor. And finally, the aseptic technique is now complete and the surgery may begin. Hopefully, you can see how things have changed for the better in the past couple of decades. So why is it important to learn about these techniques today? It is because all of our lives have been changed due to this pandemic. Even if we know it or not, we're using these techniques in our daily lives. For example, when we go to the grocery store, we use hand sanitizer before entering and after exiting the store. Along with that, we're also washing our hands frequently. We're ensuring that we wash them for at least 30 seconds or until we can sing the happy birthday song twice. And so research studies have shown that washing your hands and taking other preventative measures such as using hand sanitizer helps to reduce the risk of infection. And so antiseptic techniques have evolved throughout the years with the intention to keep people safe. Therefore, we should not forget to use these practices even after this pandemic is over. It can help protect ourselves and our loved ones. So it comes down to a simple question, to clean or not to clean? Thank you so much for listening. We hope you learned something new today.